Hey everybody, Derek here. Thanks for stopping by. You guys like Maritime Odysseys? This is wonderful. I want to tell you about this book. Okay everybody, today we're talking about The Wager, written by David Gran. He's the author of uh, The Killers of the Flower Moon. Perhaps you've read it. I haven't read that one yet, but it's pretty high on my TBR now. It's subtitled uh, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder. And I just love the cover. First of all, let's talk about that cover. That is just gorgeous. I whoever David Grant, whoever you got doing your book covers for you, this was a winner. I didn't so much care for the other the other book covers of yours, but it's a New York Times bestseller. He's had a few New York Times bestsellers. Well, at least one. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon was another one, but um, I think the other one's got quite a bit of uh, commercial success as well. This book is about a, uh, a ship called the Wager, uh, which had left the British Empire, I think, in 1740 or thereabouts, early 1740s. And they were on a naval mission to uh, track down, this was during the war with the Spanish at the time, and they were tracking down this, this one ship that was supposed to be laden with all kinds of treasures. You know, they were supposed to commandeer the boat and take home its all of its precious goods. They had ended up stranded on in Patagonia I think this is based on a true story and and he does actually stick pretty close to the historical record doesn't take any sort of fictive uh, license with it there's certain areas of the book where he even announces that there's you know there's room for ambiguity here some of the people dispute on the historical record but anyway they end up stranded in Patagonia I think and then a month later another ship gets stranded uh, somewhere the southern part of Chile can't remember what the inlet was and it was three survivors of that same ship with extremely disparate accounts of what happened uh, that's where the mutiny part comes in and so anyway uh, the admiralty called a court martial and you know was basically trying to determine was this mutiny called for was this uh, justified aside from all the you know maritime uh, romanticism that's really captured in this book it does talk about those legal battles at the end and it shows you know like how people behaved in extremists just you know being stranded and the starvation and the the you know the infighting and all the rest of it was just so fascinating this book was actually recommended on barack obama's uh, 2023 reading list and uh yeah i i would highly recommend it as well i can't remember exactly where i placed this for for a rating let me see here i put it at four stars so you know and i, I would probably stand by that it wasn't quite a five star for me i'm not exactly sure why but it was really good you know i think you guys will enjoy it it's definitely uh how a history should be told it's got a real novelized quality to it you know and there's some good uh, illustrations here in the cover of you know the various areas that they they went so they managed to find their safety and sailed 3,000 miles all the way back over 3,000 miles I believe and you know being racked by seas and again uh, you know, scurvy and starvation and even cannibalism makes a bit of an appearance in this book and it's such a, a crazy story of deprivation and hardship and uh, and leadership you know I think it's a story about like what's involved in real crisis points especially when you're like castaways what the hell do you do how do you uh how do you work together and pull pull towards a, a common objective of getting back and and surviving everyone really has to be on the same terms about how the resources are used and uh, i think it's a broader lesson about how societies how governments can structure themselves you know because the question obviously arose in this like you're a castaway, uh, there's very little chance that you'll get back, you know, there's no, there's no sign of any, any sort of rescue in the short to medium term future. So are you still bounded by the British way of life? Legal questions that arose uh, amongst these people who, you know, they, were they really amenable to British authority anymore? as castaways and so they ended up being sort of a law unto themselves but still beholden to uh british hierarchy and and it just raises all kinds of interesting questions concerning anarchy and i think if you can extrapolate that you get a really clear understanding of how uh societies should orient themselves in major inflection and crisis points 
throughout history. So I really enjoyed this and um, super strong Robinson Crusoe vibes. Uh, yeah, you, you feel like a real salt at the end of it. So if you got the time to read it, you probably should. And I'd love to talk to you below in the comments about it. We'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. If you want more like the one you just watched, click the suggested video on this screen. Make sure you subscribe. And to connect with me on my other platforms, my handles are linked below in the description, all right? Take care, peeps. Till next time.